Islamic finance vis-a-vis -vis the global financing problem today. How significant is Islam, Islamic finance within the overall picture? Also, according to your presentations, the figure that you saw, um, it, it, it's just a drop in the ocean when you look at the capacity within the global finances. So something like two point something billion? Oh. Yes, in, in terms of percentage. Percentage. In terms of percentage, yes. uh, the size of uh, Islamic finance uh, transactions mm -hmm. is now composed of uh, consists of about eight percent of the world trade of the of the world uh, uh, of the value of, of the financial world financial financial. Yeah. This is worldwide, worldwide. and that is after what 25, 30 years. I think Islamic finance came really uh, in a big way within the last 25, 30 years. Sudan started first insurance company about almost 30 years ago. Malaysia started Islamic banking, Takaful, about 25, 28 years ago, and some of the regions are still coming very fast. But after that 25, 30 years, 20, 27 years, there's only about 8%. To so what extent has this global financial crisis affected finance, Islamic finance and banking? The indication that is there, the analysis that has been done, they ha the, the Islamic financial institutions, the Islamic banks, the Islamic capital market, uh, because your presentation, you are talking about um, resilience, you are talking about insulation. Um, how, to what extent is the Islamic financial industry insulated against this certain I mean, global it, crisis, it, it, it financial? They, they are in a, in a much better position compared to the conventional institution for a very simple reason that the, there, is, there is substance to their transaction. There is value to whatever whatever uh, papers that they issue, whether it is tuku, bonds, whether it is uh, uh, banking facilities, lines that is given, there is value, there is collateral attached to it. Those values are not uh, hollow, those values are solid values. Of course, it can vary due to the current situation, but I think the variation is something that, that they can absorb. After all, they were not giving out uh, lending 100% uh, lending, 100% uh, facility. If it is housing, maybe the margin financing is 80-85% like that. So there is, there is a cushion for them to be able to take any heat if there is a reduction in the, in the value of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the collateral. So they should be in a much better position, fairly well uh, insulated in that sense. So they will not be exposed to, uh, to uh, these uh, other institutions which carries papers like derivative swap that have got no value or very little value backing those sort of papers. They are not involved in those, those sort of uh, transactions. So in that sense, they, they should be uh, uh, able to sustain and to ride the current uh, crisis. But um, one would assume that in the light of this financial, global financial crisis, which is actually affecting largely the free market economies of the world. Islamic bank, Islamic finance may be uh, somehow, it, some measures of course to cushion the impact of the global financial fallout. But let me ask this question, to what, advan to what extent have you taken advantage? Because there is a crisis in the, in the, in the, in the, in the orthodox financial. That could mean something positive for the Islamic banking industry. To what extent have you been able to take advantage? Because there is an erosion of confidence yes. within the part of the I, I think, I think uh, the, the Islamic financiers, the bankers, the Islamic bankers, the, the Islamic capital markets, are also taking a cautious approach. I don't think because the other side is having problems, they, therefore they are eager, they are anxious about it. But is there any way they can turn that into their advantage? Well, they should be able to. But at the same time, they answer. will need to evaluate uh, what sort of sectors that they want to go into, how do they want to go in. They will, they, they, they certainly it, it offers to, uh, to the Islamic financier, to the Islamic financial institutions, a lot of opportunities uh, to be able to come into the market and offer innovative enough products that the market can, 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 uh, can absorb. But they will have to also take due account of the current problem because they don't want to get themselves 
trapped in the same manner that the conventional institutions get trapped. But otherwise, they should be over. They should be able to offer, and there should be enough opportunities or windows of opportunity for them to to get themselves into and seize, or rather, capitalize on the on the present position to enhance the market share to 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 enhance the participation of uh, uh, of Islamic financial institutions in the in the in the economy of the world. Um, then looking at Africa, according to your presentation, over 400 million, more than 400 million of Africa's population is Muslim. What inroads have you been able to make into Africa in terms of Islamic banking and finance? What we have seen, uh, except probably uh, North Africa, uh, there's some uh, initiatives that have been taking place within the last 10 years or so. I think the other parts of Africa, the, the initiatives are still at a very uh, early stage, uh, be it in the major countries in Africa or South, America, South Africa side. So it has not actually advanced very far compared to Middle Eastern region, the, the Gulf countries and compared to the southeastern region uh, like Malaysia, Indonesia, that part of the world. In UK also they have made some initiatives. In America they have made some initiatives on this Islamic finance. But I think in, in Africa per se, what, what we have seen, it is still early stage and certainly it offers a lot of potential, a lot of opportunities. We have seen some initiatives being taken in Nigeria, for example, to set up Islamic banks. I hope you will come, and it, it is, uh, I believe it is coming. Uh, there are pockets of uh, uh, initiatives undertaken by uh, e e e essentially individual grouping. Unlike uh, Malaysia, where it is uh, driven by the government that, that wanted to have this uh, sector of the economy flourish, uh, I have not seen certainly major African economy is taking that sort of initiative. Perhaps uh, the northern part of Africa is doing it. But, but I think if you want to have that kind of impact, I mean, increase substantially your market share, you certainly will have to make headway in the West, in the developed countries. Looking at the global financial situation, bulk of it, it's all there. If you are not able to do that, then you have a problem. There is this cultural barrier, because when you come to Islamic banking, clearly you are talking about the tenets of Sharia, the applications in terms of commerce. The cultural barrier, how much or to what extent do you think it will affect your ability to make inroads into it? I, I think, I think um, uh, we, we will have to take from the standpoint that Islamic finance is not only for Muslims. Islamic finance offers uh, going by the Sharia principle, by going by the tenets, the basic tenets of Islam, but it is it is to be subscribed by by any any people from any background, from any culture, from any religion. Now, where Islamic finance uh, uh, wanting to offer their services and their products, they have to be equally competitive. They have to be equally innovative. This is what we have seen in the UK, for example, when they wanted to offer Islamic financing scheme or takaful product. At the end of the day, even for the Muslims, they will start question, what is the price like? What do I get out of this? How is that compared to the conventional? So, yes, uh, the, the very basis of Islamic finance, it has got to be Sharia compliant, but when it comes to the commercial consideration, when it comes to the business operation, it has got to be as competitive, as innovative as the conventional. So it is not the issue of whether it is going to be operating in the UK, whether it is going to be operating in, uh, in Africa. In Malaysia, when we started Islamic banking operation and Takapu, we, we, we faced the same, same problem, same question by the Muslims themselves. Because we are so used to uh, looking at the pricing and the economic benefit out of it. So it is not right to say that when it comes to Islam, it has got to be charity. When it comes to Islam, it has got to be cheap. 
but at the same time when it comes to Islam it cannot be expensive otherwise we will price ourselves out of in the conventional market so it has got to be uh, like the sukuk for example the bond it is subscribed by some of the big uh, corporations which has got nothing to do with Islam but they were looking at it from the from the uh, pricing point of view from the benefit point of view and I believe they are also looking at it from the system point of view it is a system that, that will work because uh, they will lock the, uh, the, uh, the profit rate for the entire period of the, uh, of the suku until maturity of the bond whereas in conventional it fluctuates based and by reference to the lending rate that can go up and down at any time. So, so there, there, there is that element of certainty. There is that element of belief by the subscribers of the financial ins uh, instrument that the system is better than the, the so-called uh, free economy system. This is, I, I believe, offers uh, an age for Islamic finance to be able to be accepted by the economy, by the industry. But again, we have to look at the uh, the pricing, the service level, the product innovation, the creativity, while we are still keeping to the principles, uh, the Sharia compliance uh, issue, it is there, it is addressed properly, but at the same time, we are just as good as, as anybody else. Yeah, what, what, what is